I've got this frame in place. Let's do the wooden boards that's going to be forming the bed. Going up. I've got this frame back into place. And I'm just looking at it now and I'm thinking to myself, if I do the boards that's going to be forming the load bed now, it will be just so much easier because my access is easy. If I put the sides on first, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. So I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's get into making some boards. On my way to the woodshed, I nearly stepped on this missus. Maybe that's why the camera is shaking a little bit. <laughs> we call them a puff adder. They are highly venomous, but luckily they are quite placid and not aggressive. Unless you step on him. Many moons ago I used to operate a small sawmill out here on the farm. I was much younger. <laughs> and thinking back to it now, a lot more stupid I think because it was such a lot of hard work for very little money. But anyway, I've still got uh, some boards left over from those days. And in here, I've got some rough sawn poplar planks. So I think I'm just going to dig through here, see if I can find something we can use on the truck. This one is definitely too short. Yeah, this one is long enough. Here is the first one we can use. That's quite a change from the normal grinding dust. <laughs> So I purposefully didn't stick these planks through the planer to plane them smoothly. Just gave them a light sand just to get rid of that sort of furriness. I can call it that. So you can still see the teeth marks from the sawmill. They're also slightly cupped and a little bit warped. But that's all going to help us to add some character. So now of course this wood looks all new and fresh. So later on I'm going to show you how we can make it look more weathered within minutes using the Wishes Brew. <laughs> it's not a dye or a stain you buy, it's actually a chemical reaction, but more about that later. So on the fancy show trucks they've got like an aluminium or stainless steel extrusion running here on the, the joints. Oh yeah, this is a budget build. We're never, definitely not going to be getting into that. So I'm toying with the idea of just using, this is like 3 quarter inch mild steel, a 20 mil. Just making up something to cover the seams. I think that'll look quite smart. So yeah, you're going to say it's going to rust. Exactly, that's the whole point. <laughs> 
But so how do I keep this in place though? I think, I suppose if you use a wider flat bar, you could drill holes and then screw it from the top. But I don't want to do that. So I tacked together two pieces of this flat bar to form a T-section with the idea that it can go in like that. I think that'll work quite smart. And then I don't have to fasten it through the top. Now I can't buy a mild steel T-section in this area where I live. So I guess I'm just going to have to make this up then. So using the same material I quickly made myself this little jig. So the idea is it can now locate on the bottom flat bar. And then I can use this section, put it on there, and then it will hold it centrally so I can tack it on each side. And I can just move it along. And that will ensure that my the T leg <laughs> will stay in the middle. Like that, I'm just tacking it every three inches or so on either side. Okay, let's go and find out how my forest fabricated T-section is going to work. <laughs> so now that should just drop in like so. Yes, man, I like it. Okay, but now am I going to hold it in place? I mean, this section now sits like that. Um, that plank slides in there. So I guess I could draw holes along there and screw this into that plank and then slide this one in like that. The only problem is my planks are pretty warped. So I'm not sure I like that and I'm also going to have some problems with this down the line. I need to come up with a better idea. I'm going to weld on a little M6 stud like that, every 300 millimeters or so. If you're in the States, that's a quarter inch stud every one foot. <laughs> it's a cool little trick for holding a short stud to screw on this extension nut to help me. And now I can easily, easily tack it on. without burning my fingers. <laughs> so let's see if my plan's gonna work. These offcuts is going to serve as my boards. So they're going like that. Then I've made a little plate. Goes across like that. And then somewhere here is a nut. Where's my nut here? Put the nut on. Let's tighten that up. That is pulling it very nicely. Look at that. I <laughs> love it. There it is. I did a little modification just to make it a bit, little bit better. I just provided a little clearance there for the stud. 280 welds, 30 studs, and 30 plates later, and I have my five T sections. And once again, I've come to the conclusion that I am an absolute sucker for punishment. <laughs> to give my wooden boards a more weathered look, I'm going to use this potion. Known by some people in a woodworking fraternity as the witch's brew. You can see a monster lurking in the darkness. The recipe is very simple. You take a piece of steel wool, throw it into a container and add some normal white household vinegar. And you let, let the brew sit for a while. My concoction has been standing for about 24 hours. The longer you let it stand, the more potent it becomes. 
So it's not an on finish like varnish or paint. It actually is an in finish, if I can put it like that. This stuff causes a chemical reaction with the tannin in the wood. And that, what bring, what, and that is what makes the color. So the results will depend on the species of wood, depending on the tannin content. And in some species of wood like oak, it will actually make it go completely black. So a bit of experimentation is advised, <laughs> just to see how dark it's going to go. It's also going to depend on the strength of your mixture. So I don't want it to go too dark. I'm just going to go and stick this piece in the sun quickly. And then let it dry out and then I'll bring it back to show you. Ten minutes later, it's dried out. And look at the massive difference. This piece here is even darker. I've given it, given it another coat. So even I think even this one is too dark for me. So I think I might actually thin down my solution with say 50% water and give it a try. If memory serves, the chemical name for this concoction is iron acetate, but I could be wrong. Don't quote me. Google is your friend. <laughs> if I oil this, look at that. The, the finish is even more dark. Can you say it like that? Darker, more dark. <laughs> so I'm putting on my thin down mix now. And there's an element of surprise involved now in this business because we don't really know what it's going to look like. I'm going to put this on. And then I actually, I think I might even put my planks out in the sun so that it can dry. And then we'll see what we get. The change is starting to happen out here in the sun. I just wanted sort of a grey weathered colour. And then Mother Nature can do the rest of the work. So I don't want it to go too dark. Let's see. I think that's just enough of a colour change to make me happy. Just what it looked like originally. So it's just sort of a greyish colour now. And I think that looks quite realistic. I've got this flat bar lip welded onto each 2x2. Two two. So the plan now is to drill through this and then screw through the hole into the plank to hold it in place. So before I screw anything down, I'm just going to do a, a dry run. And let's not forget my T-sections that I slaved over, <laughs> which is now going to go in something like that. Just got to give some clearance for the studs and I'm going to do that with a router. So the dry run is done. This trim piece is going to go right there, like so. Check it out, man. I smock it a lot. <laughs> Another language lesson. Smock. S-M-A-A-K. It's a truly South African slang word for like. So if you say, I smock it a lot, it means you like it a lot. We also like to say, I smock it stuckant, boot. <laughs> I smock it stuckant, boot, means... I like it a lot, brother. <laughs> I think I'm just going to park here on my load bed for a while, my new load bed, and shoot the breeze. You know, the weather here by us has been like a yo-yo, eh? Up and down, up and down. And my sweater like a blinker, on and off, on and off. It can't seem to make up its mind. But I think spring is on the way. And my friends up there in the Northern Hemisphere, your autumn must be coming, so I can't wait for summer. So yeah, I've been very excited to do this, but I can't screw it down for final, because I've still got to build a fuel tank, I've still got to do the exhaust. So uh, it'll be just easier to do that when all of this is off. So I'm going to disassemble it, 
all of this. <laughs> I also have to do the final board that goes in there and there. But that I can only do when the sides are on. So um, I'm going to call it a video. Thanks for spending time with me out here in the shop. I enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video when we probably tackle a fuel tank of sorts. Until then, have a lucky one.